Ever wondered why English seems so difficult for Japanese learners? It's all about grammar. English grammar can be a tricky beast, especially for those hailing from the land of the rising sun. This is largely due to the stark differences between the structure of English and Japanese sentences. English is a subject-verb-object language, while Japanese is a subject-object-verb language. This fundamental difference can create a whole host of challenges. Let's delve into the three most common mistakes Japanese learners often make. First, there's the misuse of articles. With no equivalent in Japanese, the, a, and an can be a real headache. Then there's the confusion with prepositions. Words like in, on, and at don't directly translate, leading to mix-ups. And finally, there's the difficulty with verb tenses. English has a plethora of tenses, each with its own rules, which can be overwhelming. Now that we've identified these mistakes, it's time to delve deeper and understand each one. Articles A, AN, and THE may seem simple, but they often create confusion for Japanese learners. Let's unravel this mystery together. In English, articles are used to indicate specificity. The definite article THE is used when we're referring to something specific, while A and AN are indefinite articles, used when the exact identity of what we're referring to is not important. However, in Japanese, there's no direct equivalent to English articles, which can lead to confusion. Here's a common error, saying I saw a cat instead of I saw a cat. Without the article A, the sentence feels incomplete. Similarly, saying I saw the cat implies a specific cat, not just any cat. Another snare is knowing when to use A or AN. Remember, A is used before words that start with a consonant sound, while AN is used before words that start with a vowel sound. Remember, practice makes perfect. Use articles as much as possible in sentences to get the hang of it. Prepositions can be tricky, even for native English speakers. For Japanese learners, they can be a real challenge. These small words like in, on, at play a significant role in English sentences. They tell us where or when something happens, among other things, but their usage often doesn't align with the logic of Japanese language, leading to common mistakes. For instance, in English, we say, I live in Tokyo, not I live at Tokyo. Another common pitfall is the difference between on time and in time. On time means at the scheduled time, while in time means early enough. It's these subtle differences that can trip you up. Here's a tip. Try to learn prepositions in phrases rather than in isolation. This way you'll get a feel for how they're used in context. Remember, practice makes perfect. While prepositions can be difficult, understanding their usage can significantly improve your English. Verb tenses in English are quite different from those in Japanese, leading to common errors. So let's dive into the fascinating world of verb tenses. In English, we use different tenses to express when an action happens, present, past, and future, with each having their own subtleties. A common mistake made by Japanese learners is the misuse of the simple past and present perfect tenses. For example, a learner might say, I've seen that movie last week instead of, I saw that movie last week. The simple past tense is used to talk about completed actions in the past, and the date or time of the action is known or specified. On the other hand, present perfect tense describes an action that happened at an unspecified time before now. The correct sentence is, I have seen that movie, with no specific time mentioned. Verb tenses might seem overwhelming, but with practice, you can master them. So, we've covered a lot today. Let's quickly recap. We embarked on an enlightening journey through the labyrinth of English grammar, specifically focusing on three crucial areas that often pose challenges to Japanese learners. First, we delved into the seemingly simple yet deceptively complex world of articles. We learned that the correct usage of a, an, and the can dramatically enhance the clarity of our expressions. Next, we navigated the tricky terrain of prepositions, we discovered how these tiny words can significantly impact the meaning of a sentence, often in ways that are not intuitive to a non-native speaker. Finally, we grappled with the intricacies of verb tenses, understanding how they can subtly, yet powerfully, depict time and continuity in our narratives. Let's not forget that practice is the key to mastering these grammar points. Remember, making mistakes is part of the learning process. Keep practicing, and you'll be a pro at English grammar in no time.